Jarritos Mariachi USA. Let me break it down. Break it down. Jarritos Mariachi USA Talent Search is looking for someone ages 18 to 25 singing at the Hollywood Bowl. And the grand prize is $5,000. What if you're 27? I have friends who are like, I'm too old. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, this is Lupita Infante, and this is when Zay Zay met. And today, Zay Zay met me. Get by to down, mi gente. I am Zay Zay, and welcome to When Zay Zay Met. Today we're talking to a wonderful artist who's uh, making her own indelible mark in the entertainment industry. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Grammy-nominated singer, songwriter, Lupita Infante is with us today. Hello. Hey, hey. So, so, so amazing. So good to have you on. Yeah, likewise. It's great to be here and just excited. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Okay, let's start from like the beginning, if you don't mind. Okay, let's okay. take it back. You're a California girl, right? That's right, yeah. Tell me what it was like for you uh, growing up. Um, very, I think I would say average. average. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, nothing special, you know, went to school, um, you know, did my thing. Um, but of course, you know, growing up, on the music side, um, I would always see my dad like on TV and on movies and also my grandfather, um, who is Pedro Infante um, for people watching. Um, so, you know, that was a little bit different, but other than that, I think everything else was just pretty, you know, normal first generation struggle type of growing up in South uh, East Los Angeles. That's that's interesting to me, right? Because I mean, obviously, like you just mentioned, you are the granddaughter of and daughter of legendary people, and your family's legacy is quite long and quite extensive. It's actually very surprising to think about you having grown up normal, <laughs> right? And, and and so then the question begs: What's normal for you? <laughs> I mean, it was, um, so my mom is kind of like my, was like, you know, kind of a single parent because my dad was often, you know, on the road or in Mexico, you know, doing his thing. And um, so my mom was like a working mom. She worked for the uh, school district, the LA school district. And um, so, you know, um, I ate McDonald's all the time because she was too, you know, tired to come home and cook, that type of thing. Um, and, you know, I think my mom just tried her best to, because my mom is from Zacatecas, so, you know, she came to this country and um, has worked really hard to, to really, you know, have something for herself and then give me whatever she could and she she always thought you know education is very important I need you to do good in school even though I school wasn't really my thing but I finished I finished <laughs> and um and yeah so I, I found music at a early age because you know she was always looking out for like, who can teach my daughter, you know, how to sing or play instruments or um, dance. I was in Hawaiian dance classes even. Oh so I was, I was busy, I was a busy kid. Um, and um, yeah, so, you know, we, to me, um, so we lived in Huntington Park for a little bit Okay. And then we moved over to to Downey, the Mexican Beverly Hills. What ah, they fa, fa, fa. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I kind of been in Downey ever since. And um, yeah, I love it here. So I I see that there's similarities, right, with with parents because 
my mom and, and also came from another country searching for a better life, you know, like so many of our stories are, right? And, yeah. and I noticed that there is a, it, it seems like there's a similarity among all those people that do that, right? Which is to, yes, sometimes you can grow up in very strict upbringings and sometimes you can um, uh, lose your way, maybe even because of all the strictness, like sometimes they hold on so tight, it's like trying to grab sand, right? It just kind of slips through their fingers. But one thing I do notice is that it's very common that people like our parents, our moms, right? Because I also grew up in a single parent, are very nurturing when it comes to uh, when it, when it comes to their child embracing the artistic side of what yeah. they do, right? Definitely. And, it's, and, and it feels like from you said from an early age you were doing music. Yeah, I was. Um, I think you know by the time I was. 10 years old, um, I knew how to play the guitar and sing, and I was like in competitions in my community, and you know, I was performing. So, so yeah, and then my mom was very nurturing of, of the art, and I think she knew, you know, that there, there was something there, and, um, and you know, I, I think it helps you develop too as just a, a, a human being to be in the arts. And for sure, for sure, absolutely. Um, now, being from such a legendary family, did you find that there were like a lot of pressures or, or were there none? Like, it, would it be surprising to find out that there really weren't any pressures? Or what kind of pressures do you even feel still today? I think, um, you know, for me, because I, I grew up here, whereas I have siblings, half brothers and sisters who grew up in Mexico. So I think their experience was actually different but growing up here and in Los Angeles I feel like I was pretty under the radar and like kind of free of like you need to be a certain way because you are like the granddaughter of Pedro Infante so I I, I think at, like you know at home everybody knew that I was singing so everyone wanted me to sing at every party of course, like, a ver, mija, you know, like, can, you know, canta. So it was that kind of thing. But um, like in school and in the community, I think it was like really, really chill, you know. Whereas even my, I have like a half brother, and his name is Pedro Infante the third. And then I knew he would like even get bullied, like for you know having the same name as. Uh, it, you know, and just people just knew that they came from from that line. And I think here I kind of was able to get away with just, you know, under the radar kind of yeah. kind of life. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it helps because it allows you to flourish. Right. Yeah. As opposed to feeling like you're kind of always under that microscope um, or being judged all the time. Right. When you're encouraged, you can flourish. That, that is so true because once I did start singing like more in the public and and I'm talking about you know like a few years ago and now I think that's when people and the pressure is more present and there's expectations and um, that kind of thing but you know I still you know have fun with it and I always just be my you know try to be yourself that's the only thing that i can i know i can do really well so sure um when you went to college you studied ethnomusicology right yeah that's right and yeah. um and you would think okay as as you know maybe a, a, a an, an arts nerd or something like that that you were and especially having been singing since you were you know, 10 years old, one would think that you would just continue in the arts, right? That you would take vocal lessons and you would, you know, take performance lessons and performance arts. But it's interesting to, to it was interesting to read that you were really into doing the research about your culture, or at least the cultural music that surrounds yeah. us all the time, right? About, you know, Latino music, the machismo and all that stuff. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that and then tell us what you think was probably the most surprising thing you learned about our music so when i i was a, a community college student and it was 
time to transfer and I did apply to different schools and I, I did have the option to go into performance. Um, and then UCLA accepted me as an ethnomusicology, you know, undergrad. So um, I got so excited to just, you know, UCLA and my mom was like, you know, just so proud. And I was like, I think I'm gonna take this road. And I had taken some classes like world music and some anthropology classes. And it was really interesting to me just, you know, the culture and the history and how political events influence. And I think even my grandfather being such a phenomenon in, in the time that he grew up, uh, and in the time that his career flourished in film and how Mexican film had this golden age, all of that was very interesting to me and how it was sort of, you know, mariachi music was kind of funded in a way by the government um, because we needed like this national identity and we needed to unite the nation. And even his image was, you know, part of that whole culture, that building of that culture. And um, I think there is some stuff that happens, you know, just organically, like even the mariachi ensemble and how it's um, um, evolved. But there was also, you know, some strategic things that were happening too, um, that also shaped the way the music that we hear today um, sounds sounds like so all of that to me was very interesting of course the machismo thing um because you know i'm a girl i'm an independent woman my mom has always you know has been that kind of lady and like you can accomplish anything follow your dreams you can do it si se puede mija you know so of course you know studying that was also really interesting to me because I, I didn't grow up with that kind of bigger um, per se my dad was also very like pursue your dreams and you know do what you want to do you can do it kind of um, attitude so um, I always felt that you know was interesting how in our culture it does really affect our music and the way we interpret songs and and even this you know this persona of, you know, the macho and the borracho, all of that, I love it. And it's so interesting to me. Um, so yeah, I just took a deep dive and I studied as much as I could, researched as much as, much as I could. And um, it's something that's still really interesting to me to this day. It's fascinating, it really is. Is it something that you think um, influences your musical choices? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And then the way, you know, that we make music and even other artists around, um, like even this past weekend, we were in Chicago on tour with La Santa Cecilia. So, you know, that was really cool. And um, their lead singer, La Marisol, she's just an incredible powerhouse singer. And just listening to the, the themes of their music and how they're a little bit more, you know, um, like socially conscious and, and thinking about that and thinking about, you know, the music I do too. And, and um, it, it, I just, I can get <laughs> so into it, but it was, it was um, such a good experience to, because our music comes in like so many different shapes and sounds and styles and um, and it's all a reflection of who we are and like what we're going through and um, and the things that you know influence us like political movements or social movements so it's all it's all really beautiful and um, for me I, I know the mariachi tradition really well so I think I kind of play into the breaking of some of those norms and rules that are set up in a respectful way um, that is to me very playful and, um, and fun. Yeah, absolutely. And yes, you break them because, you know, they weren't rules that were set up initially with people like you in mind, right? Like it wasn't traditionally like you'd have a female lead 
you yeah. know, that just, it wasn't for, for females, right? It was for the male to, like you were saying, the machismo and all that stuff. And, you know, yeah. it's for it's meant for you to swoon, right? <laughs> Not necessarily for you to be, you know, the one in power, the one in charge. Exactly, and, yeah. you know, you're doing it. You're doing it. I mean, well, well, yes. you are Grammy nominated. I mean, you're doing it well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You're absolutely welcome. You're working on your second album right now. Is that correct? That's correct. Tell us about it. Tell us about it. <laughs> um, so we released the first song. Um, I'm now a Sony music artist as of this year. So we put out the first single, which is Asma Thuya. And, you know, there's different... Um, I, I am going, like, through this, like, spectrum of mariachi, of, like, a little bit with Norteño, a little bit maybe what you hear nowadays um, in the Sierreño genre and how that's evolving a little bit. So I'm playing with um, a lot of different sounds. And then there are also some songs that are just traditional, um, just straight mariachi, beautiful, beautiful mariachi um, arrangements. And um, so the last year I just spent writing all kinds of songs um of like you know personal experience experiences with the people around me my loved ones and just talking about different just different parts of life do your grandfather and your father inspire you in any way do they influence your your writing your music in any way today even still yeah definitely definitely because um I think I, in my music, in a sense, because I come from that line, I have kind of this sense of responsibility where I do want to honor them all the time, at all times. Um, and so there, there, are, there are songs that really talk about, you know, where I come from and the beautiful things about our motherland and so there's a little bit of that. Um, there's songs that just talk about, you know, kind of feelings, you know, that I have towards my family, towards my father. So there's there's a little bit of everything. That's awesome. Yeah. Cantame una. No, let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm one day, one day we'll have a jam session. You and me, girl. It'll be great. It'll be great. Okay, so now you got to tell us a little bit about Jarritos Mariachi USA. It's uh, it's happening, and you're a part of it. You got to tell me about it. All right, so let me break it down. Break it down. Uh, <laughs> all right, so the Jarritos Mariachi USA talent search is looking for someone ages 18 to 25. Um, we're accepting videos right now. These are audition videos for people like myself who have had that dream of, you know, singing on, I don't know, I want to call it the biggest mariachi stage in the country. Um, at the Hollywood Bowl, happens every year, Mariachi USA. Um, last year, I got to play my, my set on the Mariachi Hollywood Bowl. Mariachi USA Hollywood Bowl stage, and it was a dream come true because let me tell you, the first time I ever went there, um, I was part of this mariachi class and we got free tickets. So we go, and I remember, you know, I was sitting all the way in the back at the top of the Hollywood Bowl and looking down at the stage and just thinking, wow, like, I want to sing there one day. And that dream came true. So I feel like if, you know, I'm dreaming this, I'm sure there's so many other wonderful mariachi singers who are having the same dream, the same vision for themselves. So I want to encourage everyone who sings mariachi to submit if you're between the age of 18 and 25, or if you know somebody that you think would do well, um, encourage them, tell them to submit. It's really easy. Just look it up um jarritos mariachi usa talent search and um it'll take you right to the page and um you can submit your video and 
um, there's three expert judges who are going to be looking for, you know, the personality, the vocal talent, and um, interpretation. So um, it's going to be it's going to be great. And nice. I, it, I mean, if imagine, you know, like someone who's out there dreaming about singing on an incredible stage, this this could be it. And the grand prize is five thousand dollars. What if you're 27? <laughs> well, maybe not 27. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I know. <laughs> I have friends who are like, I'm too old. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, but, you brought something up that was really interesting. Um, you know, when I was younger, I also had um, uh, uh, dreams of be being a, um, a musician, right? And so every year you'd watch something like the Grammys or the American Music Awards and you think to yourself, man, one day I'm going to be on that stage. So many of us do that in life. So few of us accomplish that goal. You did that. Is there another stage you want to conquer? Yes, there's like many. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, I feel like I'm just starting off and hitting my stride. Yeah. And um, even this month, you know, we've been on tour and just kind of in, we've been in Tucson and Texas and Chicago. And it's like, it's incredible. It's, it's amazing to see that um, there's all these people who really love mariachi out there and and um, to know that there's venues and, and stages that you know they they want to hear this music and this tradition i think i think that's so exciting for me and and yeah if i can take it all over the country and then all over the world then that would make me the happiest um but I, i'll tell you one thing singing on the hollywood bowl stage that is like no other stage and uh that I mean the feeling you know that you get is just undescribable being up there it's like this wall of people and everybody's cheering and everyone's it's incredible so for you know whoever has that dream you know and I think you know looking for that young person you know the new the next generation of singers so yeah, make sure you enter or if you know someone, um, submit your video. I'm excited. I'm going to be there um, on June 18th clapping for whoever wins. And I can't wait to, to see the new talent. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. One more question, then I'll let you go. Yeah. What's your favorite memory? My favorite memory. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I've never gotten asked that question. I like that question. I think I have a lot of good memories. I don't know. I think even remembering being at the Hollywood Bowl, remembering, you know, when I was there, when I was, you know, nowhere and doing nothing, and I still had this long, long journey ahead of me, and then remembering that feeling uh, of going on stage and just like giving it your all. I think that's an incredible memory, an incredible accomplishment too, something to be proud of. Sometimes you don't know what the journey is gonna look like, you know? Right. Um, but you just kind of put one foot in front of the other and you just keep going. So I think that's a good memory to have. Just, you know, I started here, but now I'm here. How it started, how it's going. Y te lo merece, hermanita, te lo merece. I'm Thank telling you. you. You're, Thank you're, a, you're a wonderful talent. I love listening to the music, and I can't wait to hear a lot, lot more uh, continued success and lots of love in your future. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all so much for watching When Zay Zay Met. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell to be notified when we upload more conversations with celebrities and other interesting people. Now, if you'd like to see your favorite celebrity on the show, it's simple. Just tell us who that is by leaving us a comment down below. We hope you enjoyed today's episode, and we'll see you on the next one. Hasta la próxima. No quiero del corazón.